so last week we talked about the rise of the worm lord which is a part of the door within series this week we're going to talk about the final storm which is the last book in the trilogy um it's going to be a bit of a longer summary than normal just because there is a lot that happens in the book there's a lot um, of storylines to cover so um starting with aiden the book starts off with him he's in a plane he's going to maryland but then there's a storm which is like not a normal storm so obviously it's like connected to paragor or whatever um but it almost knocks the plane down and almost kills them so that's where we start off with with aiden uh they get back to maryland everything's fine he goes to see robbie um, and Robbie's dad is there, which different because Robbie never lived with his dad. He only lived with his mom. He's not kind to Aiden, basically kicks him out when he finds um, Aiden showing Robbie the scrolls, but they already know the story. Like, they already believe, they just believe in the wrong side. Whatever. Aiden goes back the next day, sort of, gets a chance to talk to Robbie, um, him and Count Yogan from... The last book he was a fake ambassador um try to convince him that the story that he knows is wrong and that uh paragor was actually in the right this whole time um and king helium got obsessed with power or whatever so uh they're like well it's wrong you know nobody knows the true story nobody was there except for king helium and Paragor, so why would King Helium not, like, try to convince people that he's right? Like, they're, that's the only story that they know, so it could be wrong. Um, and Aiden's like, you know, that's true, maybe I am wrong, but then he thinks back and thinks Captain Valathor was there and told me what he saw, and that was my grandpa, so he's like, no, you're wrong, whatever, um, exposes him, and Robbie's like, what maybe i've been wrong this whole time um and then they they fight robbie kills him yogan not aiden um and aiden gets pulled back along with red back into the realm to seek what was lost which basically means go find the internet go find this prophecy and go find the um scribe guy who was there at the beginning of time with king Elium and wrote down these prophecies so those are the lost things. Uh, so meanwhile, while all that's happening, Antoinette is still locked up behind the gate of despair. She manages to get out whenever Paragor's forces go to march on Alibol because she's just that cool. Uh, basically 90% of their forces are gone. She's like, cool, I can get out now. She gets out, she meets Zabed, who is the scribe guy from that Aiden is supposed to be finding, uh, that also the other group that we're going to talk about is on a mission to find him. They don't, because he's behind the gate of despair. They're escaping, they run into Aiden, um, who has gotten there, and he's dressed in paragor armor so he doesn't get caught. Whole mess. Whole mess. They fight each other and then realize, oh, I know this person's fighting style, that's my friend. Um, Aiden's like, oh, look, I found this prophecy thing in a tree. Um, and then Zabed is like, I can read that for you. And tells them, and basically it's like, the main part of the prophecy is like, Paragor's gonna win. And this little extra part is like, but when the three witnesses come and make the right decision, past events will disappear or something like that. I don't even know. So it basically takes away everything that's happened. So at this point, I was like, well, everybody's going to be okay now. Everyone's going to come back to life. They go back to their dragons. There's a battle. The dragons are dead. Zabed gets killed. Um, Antoinette and Aiden get out, but then they nearly die because they get out and end up on the Grimlock. And then the stilling happens. So their horse that they have dies. They almost die. But then uh, Fallon, the, the mortar wraith from the first book, um, finds them and saves them. So, they're taken back to Alable for this battle. All that goes to Robbie's story. 
so Robbie becomes more of a main character in this one. You know, before we've just kind of seen him as a side character. He was Aiden's best friend. Aiden wanted to go back and be able to save him. So after Aiden went and talked to him and then Aiden got pulled back by the thread, Robbie went home and was reading the scrolls and then his dad was like, no, and freaked out because his dad's a bad person. And then Robbie ran and ran and then was like, I want to go to the realm. So he does. He calls out to King Helium. He goes to the door within. Um, and then he's in Owlbull. And they're like, you're going to be the 12th knight. Congrats. He trains for a little bit, not for very long. Discovers that he's really, really good with dragons. Tames the one that they say can't be tamed. It's his new best friend. Um, he talks to King Elium, which he doesn't realize is King Elium. They just call him the Old Glimpse, but it's obviously King Elium. Um, and so he becomes the Twelfth Knight on a mission to go find Zabed, which only vaguely works out because, yeah, they get a bunch of new allies, but they didn't do at all what they were there to do. So it's fine. It worked out in the end. They got a bunch of new friends. Um, so, during this entire time, basically this is showing a lot more of his self-doubt because he's been following Paragor this whole time and, you know, people, a lot of people don't seem to trust him because of that. And he's like, am I good enough? Like, if I, if I die here, will my mom and will my sister be okay? Um, all that. And so Paragor basically is in his head convincing him, like, if you don't go back, then they're gonna die. And so he's freaking out, dealing with a lot of self-doubt, but everybody around him is like, it's gonna be okay. Paragor is a liar, and he's the one telling you that. You're gonna be fine. So he goes on the mission, continues, everything's fine. Um, he joins the battle against Paragor. So basically that's the bulk of the story. Um, once they're all there, it's just fighting and fighting, and they're saying how the walls are strong, but they, are falling anyway because there's the worm ward and the seven sleepers and like thousands and thousands and thousands of soldiers and they just don't have the forces to keep up um robbie is part of that he is fighting uh and then he goes to kick a ladder down and falls off of the wall which i feel like would probably injure him but he was fine don't know he's fighting on the ground um and just as you know, he's surrounded by too many people and he's about to die. Balin comes and is like, you're not a glimpse. You're a friend of Aiden, aren't you? And Robbie's like, yeah, yeah, I am. So she picks him up, takes him to Aiden and Antoinette, and they're all together again. So now that they're all together, they're all at this battle. Uh, there's a lot of fighting. Paragor basically wins the battle, which is what the prophecy said would happen. So whatever. Um, there's a lot of fighting, walls get knocked down, Paragor's forces are overwhelming, they win, uh, most people are dead, a lot of the main characters are still alive, Callium, uh, Lady Merwin, Malik, Nock, all of them still alive, still alive, but they're, like, hidden away, because while they were fighting, they, like, got knocked down or something, and now they're hiding in bell towers and whatever, and they're, like... What are we gonna do? We have to do something. And they are fully prepared to just like jump down and fight to the death. So if you remember Aiden's dream from the first book, he has a dream that Paragor is um, giving him the option, follow me or die. This is that dream. So basically it was, it was a vision that has now come to pass. Paragor is like, follow me or die, Aiden is like, I will never deny my king, and then he gets killed. Which, basically my favorite thing ever, because all three of them, he looks at them and is like, if you don't deny your king and follow me, I'm gonna kill you. And they're like, I guess I'll die then. So they all go to the realm beyond the sun, uh, King Ilium meets them there and is like, the fighting's not over, and then he brings them back along with the entire army that he has there. Naismith has made all of the swords for this battle and the three special swords for the three witnesses, which we now know are Aiden, Robbie, and Antoinette. Whatever. Kind of obvious, really. So King Elian comes back with everybody. 
And they fight some more, they defeat Paragor Zombie. It's really not much of a fight, honestly. He comes back with the art with his special army and they're all fighting and whatever. Paragor gets as Revelations would say, thrown into the lake of fire. Not really what happens in this book. Same idea. Because of all of this, the schism is like healed or whatever. Don't know the great right terminology for that, but the schism is no more. So everybody has knowledge of the glimpse world and the human world. So at this point, most everybody's dead, and I was thinking, like, oh yeah, you know, they're all gonna get to stay there with their families and be happy, no? No, no. So it... <laughs> King Helium is like, you know, we'll wait a few days, and then we're all gonna go back to the realm beyond the sun. He appoints people to rule over the different kingdoms. So, after everyone's appointed to their thrones, um, everyone says goodbye, everybody who died goes back to the realm beyond the sun and that's the end it's supposed to be a happy ending it, it depends on how you look at it so my thoughts on this i read this book super duper fast i got home from work at about five or so so i probably started reading this at about six or seven um i finished it at two or three I don't know, my phone died and I wasn't keeping track of time, but I finished it within one day. Uh, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. I think it was probably my favorite one of the series. The chapters were short in this one. There were a couple of longer ones, but they were really short. So basically what I did, from my bookmarks are little like clips. So what I did is I went ahead and I clipped like a chapter and then left a chapter not clipped and then clip the next chapter and so I had like six chapters all like split off and so whenever I would finish one chapter I would just take the clip off and set it next to me read that chapter read the unclipped chapter and take the next clip off and it was just a really good way for me to keep like going through and not having to be like oh my god I have so much left I like to give myself shorter goals rather than just being like there's so much left because otherwise I'll be like it's just a lot and I really don't want to read it right now so it helps me to do that for sure. I really love the way that everything got wrapped up in this book. So, you know, we've met characters in the previous books that we were like, are we going to know more about them? They seem to be a main player, but what are we going to do? Like Robbie, for instance. And this was his book, um, kind of. So I loved the way that the old characters were brought back in and that they um, got their stories told and kind of wrapped up all together. Uh, that was really great and I think it was a good conclusion book um I'm glad that they got to have a sort of happy ending again depends on how you look at it because they all did get the chance to say goodbye and they all knew like they're gonna be okay they're happy everything's fine but also like they're still all dead so but I guess the point of that is to show that death isn't necessarily a bad thing and that we shouldn't really be scared of it. So I think that's probably the point of the only semi-happy ending. Um, I do wish that they had shown at least like Antoinette's adoptive parents because, you know, um, Aiden gets to say goodbye to his parents because it's King Ravel and his wife. Um, I just wish that they had shown Antoinette's adopted family in the realm because they believe you know so they are followers of King Ilium um, and obviously when she gets to the realm beyond the sun she can find her birth parents but her adoptive parents that she was with at the beginning of the book or the beginning of book two they haven't seen her so I just think of them like they didn't even want her to go because they're like we don't know what's gonna happen like we're really worried about you but because King Ilium has called you obviously you have to go so now she's dead and we never get like a goodbye thing from them so I'm just hoping that maybe she got to say goodbye or something to them. Got to see them for a bit. Overall, I would say probably about five stars for this, which is so far the highest that we've done. If I find a really good book, maybe we'll go up more. Dunno. Five stars I think for this just because I really loved the writing and the way that it wrapped everything up. Um, always going to be some issues with books like I said, the ending could have been better I think but I think five stars overall I really enjoyed it I let it read it in a few hours loved it so much 
Um, so yeah, overall, uh, I think it had a really good ending to the series. I really liked the series just all together. Um, didn't love the first book as much, but by the end of it, I really kicked around in the series and I really enjoyed it. So I think total rating is about 4.25 stars, just because the first one was like three and a half and the other two were five. I don't think that's too bad. Um, so yeah. So that was this week's book of the week. It is called The Final Storm by Wayne Thomas Batson, part of a trilogy. Um, next week we're going to be talking about The Gatekeeper's Sons by Eva Poehler because it is my favorite series ever. Um, and I'm reading it again. So. And because she is the nicest and said them to me. Stay tuned for that one. Uh, let me know your favorite books. Let me know what you think of this book slash series. Let me know. Bye.